people don't even try to have enough time. Because you see, from the moment he told me the truth about myself, about my future, I he became the most important person in my life. Yes, I know that. I also hope that you know that I was never in love with your husband, and I, I wasn't trying to take him away from you. It, I, I don't know, it was some kind of a crazy desperation. What are you feeling now? I feel that for the rest of my life, whether it's for three days or three months, I am going to love Derek Mallory as much as I can. Thanks for seeing me without an appointment. Well, that's all right. You caught me at a good time for three patients. Or are you here as a patient yourself? No, I'm all right. Are you sure? I've seen you look better. Must be the customary bridegroom jitters. No cure for that, is there? Just the ceremony itself, usually. <laughs> why I came here to see you. I wanted to ask you a question about my bride-to-be. What about her? If you're a doctor, maybe you can tell me. Is Jinx about to die? Where'd you get an idea like that, Derek? Did Jinx say something to you? She didn't say anything. Well, now, look, you must have some reason for even thinking such a thing. It just came to me. Look, I tried to get her to talk to me about that illness that brought her here to your office the first time. Yes, and what'd she say? She said it was a temporary case of hypertension or something like that, that I shouldn't worry about it. Well, then why don't you just take her word for it? Damn it, why are you being so mysterious? Are you telling me you've been to a fortune teller or something? I suppose you could say a fortune teller came to me. Oh. So it was someone. Who? What difference does it make? What matters to me is how much of it is true. What's the matter with Jinx? Miles, I got a right to know. We're gonna get married in a week or so. I'm gonna be living with her. Derek, look, I'm your good friend. And I'm also your colleague. Not much I wouldn't do for you if you just asked. Well, I'm asking. But there are certain questions I can't answer. I can't reveal medical the facts about a patient. Now they didn't come here to hear the Hippocratic oath. Well, I'm sorry. That's the way it is. How many times have you stood in my office and given me facts about dozens and dozens of people? Come on, that's much different. That's police business. We're not dealing w with any criminal here. This is my life. I know you're hiding something from me. Look, any more information, you're just gonna have to get from her. She won't tell me. She gets hysterical when I mention it. That tells me as much as anything would. Miles, if you can't tell me, then just let me see the file. That's impossible. It's not impossible. It's right there. It's under A for Avery. Let's, let's just stop this. Because you get more morbid. It's under T for Come terminal. Come on, now, cut it out. It's getting stupid now. How can you call yourself my friend and keep this from me? Come on. It's right here. I'm telling you, you can't. It's true, isn't it? You can't even deny it. I know it's true that... Oh, for God's sake, I was hoping you would deny it. She's going to die, isn't she? I didn't know at first that Jim was a phony, but I was hoping that he was alive. Just the way I was hoping he was genuine. Because you liked him? Because nobody likes being made a fool of, Kelly. You should 
should be congratulating yourself. Even though I opposed it, you went and acted on your idea about seeing my stepmother, and you proved you were right. I could have done that, too. No. No, you didn't want to see Beth Bryson, just like you didn't want to hear that Jim Dietrichson was a phony. And you know something else? Instead of patting myself on the back, I should be kicking myself around the corner. Why? Because I don't think you like me any better now than you did before. Well, I certainly like Jim a lot less. Kelly, I told him I never wanted to see him again. And that also means that I am dropping out of the acting company, of course. However, I don't think you should. You're really talented, Kelly. You should be a part of what they're doing here. No. If you're not going to be a part of it, then neither am I. That's going to make me feel worse. No matter what Jim is or isn't, he's a good acting teacher. You could benefit from going there. Yeah, but, I mean, come on. It, it was just a hobby, wasn't it? I mean, I have a career to think about. A future. And who knows? Someday soon, I just might want to settle down. Let's get something to eat, okay? I was a damn fool, Heck. I could have told her weeks ago. I should have told her weeks ago. But no, I had to wait for Kelly McGrath to do it for me. Now she'll never know that I was ready to tell her myself. He who hesitates is lost, kid. Yeah, well, I lost. Damn it, if I'm sure if I just explained it right, she would have forgiven me. If I just should have told her that why I did it. Oh, you think so, huh? It was a joke, heck. It wasn't my joke, it was her joke. I didn't tell her to fall in love with somebody with my name and my background. After I came here, the joke continued. I couldn't let it go. I would have lost her. Yeah, well, you did lose her, so forget it. Move on. There are other chicks in this world. No. Did I hear you right? I did. Jimmy, baby, is in love. It's the real thing, just like in the movies. Oh, tell me what it's like, kid. Wait a minute, let me get some background music going here. There were bells on the hill. I never knew what it was like until I met Val. This whole thing, it's been a fantasy. It's been a dream. These lights, this place, you, me. Maybe we ought to just wake up. I mean, really, wake up. Well, 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 wake up. I don't get it. I'm closing the studio, heck. You can't shut us down now. Why not? Well, for a lot of reasons. Number one, I just put ten hours of electrical work into this place, and you want to shut out the lights? Yeah, you also upped our electrical bill 50%, genius. <laughs> well, what about the other guys? What about Mitzi and Cliff and, and Kelly and Val and Jody? And... Val's out of the studio, I told you that. Well, well, what about Smiley? My brother is really counting on this thing working. Who knows what that crazy guy will do if it doesn't? Okay. Okay, you guys can run it. Here, I'll give you guys the lease. I'll give you the electrical bill. I'll let you have it all. Oh, what's gotten into you? You're acting like a spoiled brat. We can't do anything without you. You know that. You're the producer, Jimmy. You make things go. Now think about what you're doing. We finally get something going, and you want to bust it up over some blonde. Bust what up? Well, we've got a rundown rehearsal studio. We've got nothing. Bunch of hopeful actors. <laughs> so what? We got more than that. We got a play and somebody to direct it. Gavin Wiley's going to join the group. He's free. No trial, no prison. Oh, yeah? Oh, I'm glad for him. And that play Cliff found, it's good, Jimmy. It's damn good. You said so yourself. I said it was good with a lot of work. Well. I guess we're just going to have to do the work. Look, you know how hard it is to find a good original property. It's hard to get money to put on a good original property, something we haven't got. Well, don't worry about that. We'll get that, too. Yeah. Well, don't tell me about Buffy Revere. She's not going to give us any money. She's just interested in Johnny. 
With your approval, Mr. Gentry? Yeah, yeah, the suit's fine. I just can't tie this damn tie. Frankly, sir, I was gratified to find that you could manage your shoelaces. Let, let me help you with it, sir. <clears throat> oh, you look smashing, darling. The Van Deerings are going to adore you. In fact, I can't wait to see the look on Lila Van Deering's face. Mrs. Revere. Toffee. I'm afraid I'm a little nervous tonight. I don't know how to act in front of these society people. Yes, that's true. You're not nearly vulgar enough. However, we do the best we can. Try not to use big words. Huh? That's more or less how it's done, sir. Is it, uh, is it satisfactory? Yeah, it's fine, thanks. The shoulders are a little tight, Gregory, do you? No, oh, they'll, they'll survive the evening, madam, so long as Mr. Gentry doesn't engage in calisthenics. You do recall that football Never player. Never mind, Gregory. Listen, darling, in case the Van Deering should inquire as to whether or not you are going to accompany me to Palm Springs in a couple of weeks, the answer is no. You're not. I'm not. No, darling, you have business here. You understand? So you're going to leave me and go to Palm Springs, huh? Yes. For a month. It's the season. I go every year. And what about me? You wait. Patiently. Try not to get into trouble. Just wait for your Buffy. I don't. Oh, dear. Well, that's a very good question, isn't it, Gregory? Indeed, madam. Uh, perhaps it would be more convenient if the young gentleman were to remain here. In the penthouse? Would that make the waiting more palatable, darling? You bet it would. Kids, how you doing? Great. Terrific. Uh, wonderful. Marvelous. Lousy, huh? Well, if it's anything that uh, Sid's chili can cure, you're in luck. It's the luncheon special. Val and Kelly just had it, and they said it was great. I just saw him outside. Didn't look too happy about it. Everybody seems so depressed today. I wonder if there's an epidemic. Well, what is it? Oh, Sid, Cliff has this wonderful play. He really does. He said we don't have any money, and we don't have a theater, and we don't have a single good idea how to get either one of them. I told you, I have some ideas that What's I'm working on. What's about, Cliff? Oh, it's this terrific uh, courtroom spectacle. It's an old-fashioned melodrama. Ooh, I like that kind of stuff. I like movie movies and old-fashioned melodramas. Sid, it's about this young guy who stabs this other young guy, kills him. Okay, now this guy doesn't have a chance of getting off, or so you think. But this guy has this terrific... Father. I mean, this great old man who is not going to let his kid hang for anything. So, so the father hires a smart lawyer. I mean, this lawyer is brilliant. And let me guess who's going to be playing him. Uh, well, but, but this lawyer is also ruthless. He'll do anything to win the case. So he finds this blood test. The ending is really gory. It's not like It's not gory. You need it's... a big ending and a blood uh, Listen, listen. If it's that good, why don't you sell it to somebody who could produce oh, it? see, but we want to do it. You see, our own acting company. And it wouldn't cost that much. I mean, a lot of us would work for practically nothing just to get it on stage. But, but we have to uh, pay for the sets. And we need a, a jail cell and we need a courtroom. And we got to pay for the theater, which I think is going to be very expensive. But if we could get this money, Sid, I know this play would pay back. I'll bet it would. Um, how much money would you need to get started? Uh, oh, well, um, we would have to rent the theater for three months in advance, and we'd have to put down a big deposit for the sets. $30,000. Well, I don't know where I could get you that kind of money, but, um... Would uh, ten thousand dollars help out? Ten thousand dollars would be great. We could get started, but who are we going to find to give us ten thousand dollars? You? I mean, no, you, Sid. You were talking about you. Yeah. Well, well, the truth is that no good ex-husband of mine just died about six months ago. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, don't shed any tears about it, honey. I married him when I was nineteen, and he ran out on me before my twentieth birthday. Well, what happened?
happened to him? Well, I heard that he got drunk, as usual, got in his car, smashed it up, and... Well, you know what they say about drinking and driving. But it seems that somebody sold him an insurance policy. And I just got a check for $10,000. Now, I've been thinking about investing the money, and, uh, well... I've always had a yen for the theater. That's, that's terrific, Sid. You can be our angel. Ah! Oh, my God. Oh, it's true. I had what they called a terminal illness, but I survived it. I had to go through an awful lot. I went through a, a bone marrow transplant. So, oh, I really don't want to even think about it now. Well, then don't, please. please. No, really, Jinx, the point is that I am cured. That miracle did happen. Look, I, I know what you're trying to say, and I have to admit that a, a part of me clings to that hope. I, I hope that something happens, that, that something is discovered. I think that all of us can't get along in life without hope, no matter how slight. Yes, I believe that very strongly. But you know, that, that helps explain why, why Miles is the way he is about me. I mean, he cares so much, more than any doctor should. But maybe it's because of you, because through me, he's reliving what he went through with you. Well, that may be some of it, but Miles is an exceptionally compassionate man. That's one of the reasons I love him so much. Yes, I can see you do. And he hasn't given up on you, and you shouldn't either. Well, look, I, I said I have some hope, but I, I don't want to deceive myself either. With you, there was a known cure, and with me, there's uh, nothing. So I just have to live each day as it comes. Yes, and one of those days very soon is going to be your wedding day. Yes. Well, our plans for the reception come. Miles, honey, I didn't know you were coming home for lunch. Oh, don't worry about that. I had something to eat at my desk. I just came by to see how you were doing. What's the matter, honey? Is something wrong? Yes, we've got to talk. But it has to wait until Jinx leaves. to do this for us, but I don't want you to spend a fortune on food and drink. Well, now, it's our party, so don't you worry about that. Isn't that right, honey? Yes, that's right. And you don't have to worry about the guest list. That's not very long. I think there are about a dozen people. Of course, there'll be one more if my father accepts. Oh, really? Have you written to him? Yes, I've written him two letters and torn up both of them. And I don't think I can write that man one single sentence without double meanings. <laughs> well, it's getting pretty late. You better do something. Why don't you send him a telegram? Well, uh, I'll do something about it this afternoon. Well, I think it would be so wonderful if he came. He could, he could give you away. Well, he gave me away a long time ago. But look, on that uh, domestic note, I think I'll leave. Well, now, Jinx, I don't want you to worry about a thing. With Nancy taking care of the chapel arrangements and me doing this wedding reception, all you're going to have to do is make yourself look beautiful. <laughs> well, I wish it were that simple. I've got about 10,000 things to do. But I, I want to thank you both again. Oh, you're welcome. We'll see you before the wedding, huh? Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Now, what's wrong? Derek knows. What? He knows about Jinx. He knows that she's dying. Oh, my God. Oh, Miles, how awful. Well, now, that's strange. What is? You haven't asked me how he knows. Oh, well, I was going to. I mean, um, how did he find out? I don't know myself. He came into my office, asked me point blank if Jinx had a terminal illness. I couldn't say anything to him. Oh, my God. Jinx didn't tell him. I didn't either, Nicole. Which leaves me. Does it? Oh, God! 